What does faith mean to you? Do you stand on your faith even when God doesn't give you the things that you want? Or have you experienced God's goodness in such a way that it makes your faith so bold as to be very visible? The reason why I'm asking about faith is because today's Bible reading was Hebrews 11 and the entire chapter goes over faith and how God has stood on his promises throughout the Bible and how the characters from the Bible had bold faith because of God doing what he said he would. So I'm going to read this to you. The first three verses of Hebrews chapter 11 goes like this. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that is so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So faith is the unwavering confidence final confidence in god to do what he said he would right so god's promises are given to us by him and as i discussed in a couple of videos ago god swore on an oath of himself because there's nothing higher than god that he can give us our word and stand on so as a believer when we have this faith it is an assurance in the hope of things yet unseen that we know God will do because he said he would. Let me read you the study notes right here. Thus, biblical faith is not blind trust in the face of contrary evidence, not an unknowable leap in the dark. Rather, biblical faith is a confident trust in the eternal God who is all powerful, infinitely wise, eternally trustworthy, the God who has revealed himself in his word and in the person of Jesus Christ, whose promises have proven true from generation to generation and who will never leave or forsake his own. And so when it says that he spoke uh, things into existence of from things that were not unseen or that were unseen, that spits in the face of science and the Big Bang Theory and all this evolution and stuff like that, because those scientific explanations presuppose that the world was spoken to existence from things that already existed. Some uh, some matter that was already around before God spoke the world into existence. But the Bible says in Genesis that God spoke from the word, the rhema word, things into existence. So God's words literally created what we see around us day to day, the earth the the human man was created out of nowhere out of nothingness out of god's rhema word right man can't fathom that because they try to use logic and try to understand the way that things are because we want to understand things on an earthly level on a on a humanly level but you can't understand spiritual things in the flesh it just doesn't work like that so we see in the bible where from beginning to end God has been faithful and stood on his promises to people from Adam to Jesus on and to, to the disciples. So we see God give a promise to Abraham that he would have a son, that that son would go on to be the father of all nations. And he still, you know, is, is very, very old when that promise comes to fruition. The Bible says that he's he, <laughs> close to death when he has his son, uh, so even as an old man, God was faithful in that promise and gave him Isaac. And later on, he tests Abraham's uh, loyalty to God and tells him to sacrifice his son. Now, mind you, he's given him a promise. He's told him already that Isaac would be the father of all nations and his generations that would be numerous more than the sands on the seashores that they wouldn't be able to be counted. So you got to think that in his mind, when he's getting ready to go sacrifice Isaac on this altar, he's thinking that God's going to just bring Isaac back from the dead. He's not knowing that God's going to actually provide a way out of it just because he's going to see his heart posture. And just like with Sarah, he told Sarah, you would be a mother. And at the beginning, you know, she scoffed at it and she laughed and God's like, why are you laughing? And she got fearful and was like, I didn't, I didn't laugh and lied to God. And even yet and still, he still stood on his promise and gave her the child that she had always been wanting. You know, um, even with Noah, Noah built the ark. You know, he had to look like a fool because before then it had never rained. And he's telling people, you know, I'm building this boat because it's going to rain. And people are like, you're stupid. You know, like 
because that's just what people are that you know that they don't care they're rude and insensitive to someone else especially when you're talking about something that is yet unseen like rain so god comes through washes out the entire world all existence ceases to live except for what's on this ark and no you know no was faithful and did what god told him to do and he no matter how foolish he looked he obeyed the word of god and we see that this promise, you know, was fulfilled for him to survive this massive flood that stayed on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights of just rain after rain after rain. And no one had ever seen it rain before. And it just goes on to to tell different stories of different people from the Bible. You know, Joseph was faithful through all the trials that he went through and blessed his sons. And just time after time again, Moses, you know, was raised in Pharaoh's house. And still turned away from the privilege of being uh, associated with Pharaoh and their sinful ways to then be used by God to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And it was faithful, you know, uh, cross the Red Sea on, on dry ground, faithful. And then the Egyptians come through and they get swept up and drowned in the same sea that they just crossed through on dry ground. Um, and so through all this Bible stuff, we see that God has made a promise. The people obeyed. And then God fulfills the promise. God is faithful to those who obey him. God is faithful to those that love him. And I've, I've come to see God's goodness on times where I was disobedient still because God wants to give us mercy and grace and show us that he still he loves us. And that sometimes even while we're being disobedient, he's still going to be a good father to us and still give us good things. Does that mean that we're going to get everything that we want or hope for or, you know, pray to God about? No, that's, that's not what it means at all because God is not some magical genie. We don't just get our wish list granted to us like Santa Claus or something like that. But for those of us that do have a hiccup or a struggle or uh, something along the way, temptation or trials come along, you know, um, God's still going to be there and he's going to be faithful through it all. I want to encourage you, those of you that are going through a struggle, those of you that are going through a trial, those of you that are being tempted by Satan, that uh, we have to stand firm on the promise that God has made that Jesus does save. Jesus' forgiveness covers a multitude of sins. And while we can be tempted and, and we can be tested in those times, temptation draws us to uh, fall in more in love with God. The more you love God, the better you'll be able to resist the temptations of the enemy. The more that we're tested through trials, the more that we can draw near to God and count on him and call on him in prayer. Lord, help me. I'm going through this trial. I'm being tested by this, this, this thing that I'm facing, this thing that I'm enduring. I need your strength. I need your power. I need your provisions, Lord. Pull me through this, Lord God. And when you're going through a temptation, Father God, I'm being tested. I'm being tempted by the devil. My flesh is weak, but you are strong, Lord. Help me through this. The enemy is dangling this carrot in front of me, but I know it's the bait of Satan, Lord. Help me to overcome this temptation. And God is faithful. He will pull you through that. I promise you that. In the world, we will have trouble. But take heart, Jesus overcame the world. So we find our strength in him. Have faith that God is going to, you know, live up to what he says. Whatever promises he's made, it's good. You can you can take his word to the bank and you can cash that check. So hopefully this message touched you guys in a way that leaves you uh, strengthened in your faith. Hopefully it asked a hard question or two to make you analyze what is it that I'm going through? What is it within me that makes me not have enough faith in God to be who he promised and says he is? Uh, and you got to understand, guys, anytime that we have an issue with the Lord, anytime we have an issue with uh, sin or whatever, we don't think that things should be going the way that we think they should be in life. It's always us. It's never God. We are always the problem. God isn't the one that causes problems. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. So that's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, God bless.